Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, May 4th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, what you need to know about the Garland terror attack. Then, farmers rise up against Monsanto and the mainstream spin on Jade Helm. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And I just think about all the veterans that have fought and died for our supposed freedoms and how we're pissing on their graves right now, and I'm tired of it. Well, by now, I'm sure you've seen reports of the attack on the Muhammad cartoon contest that was being held in Dallas. We're going to take a look at the attacks on the First Amendment and the attacks on the people who sponsored that contest as part of an attack on the First Amendment and attacks on the Second Amendment as well. The New York Times blames the event organizers talking about, well, let's put free speech aside. Here's the tweet that came out from a New York Times reporter. She said, free speech aside, why would anyone do something as provocative as hosting a Muhammad drawing contest? And as Steve Watson pointed out, free speech aside, let the floodgates open. And boy, did they. Look, listen to some of these uh, responses that we saw on Twitter. Free speech aside, that's a bizarre thing for a journalist to tweet. A plumber, maybe, okay. Another one says, pretty chilling when a reporter says, free speech aside. No wonder this administration has run all over this press corps. Another one, free speech aside, why would we then let the New York Times print anything? Precisely. We go from a situation where, as Voltaire used to say, I may vehemently disagree with what you have to say, but I will defend it to my death, not to your death, not to say that you're justified to be shot. Now, this is the way the Daily Mail headlined it. A quote from the person holding the Muhammad cartoon contest says, This is war. The woman behind anti-Islamic Muhammad cartoon contest and her long history of hatred. You see, they make the attack against her. Not against the people who showed up with guns to murder everybody, but against her. Now, to give you an idea of how they come after them personally, I think with unsubstantiated charges, they say this organization, the AFDI, is listed as a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. They describe as a watchdog organization. Clearly, we'll talk about that more in just a moment, but then they go after uh, her talking about how she lived as a well-off housewife as after a short media career and talking about her divorce. It's all about her. It's all about attacking her personally. What about any discussion of the religion behind these violent attacks against people who just have cartoons? And what about the idea, as we've seen before, blaming women who are raped, saying that they were dressed too provocatively? Or I remember the case of the Central Park jogger years ago, where she was criticized for thinking that she should be able to jog through Central Park. It was her fault for being in that place. You don't blame the victims. You don't blame the people who are exercising their free speech, no matter how obnoxious that free speech is. And let's take a look at some obnoxious speech that is directed at Christians. Let's take a look at just one cartoon that's directed at Christians with very hateful speech. This is something that comes from Fox. It's the family guy. And this is a wiki that is devoted to looking at what they portray. And this is one page that goes on for several pages about Jesus Christ and the way that he is mocked on the family guy. For instance, there's a standing gag that Jesus drives a Cadillac Escalade that we see in another episode, God is seen hitting on a woman in the drunken clam, a bar. We see another one where Stewie admires Jesus and imagines what it would be like to meet him, then enters a room in Jesus's house to find him standing in a tub, naked, washing himself, seeing Stewie watching him, he carries on. Another one, he makes use of his special powers to assist in a golf game as seen in the episode, Holy Crap. And then finally this one, because this goes on for several pages. Stewie explains to Brian that Jesus really didn't die on the cross in Stewie, Chris, and Brian's excellent adventure as God discovers in a cutaway that it was really due to cocaine and trauma to the colon. Now, the family guy, that Fox program, you know, the same people that bring you Fox News, that's really hateful, stupid, juvenile behavior. Do they have to worry about Christians killing them? No. No, as a matter of fact, most of the Christians tune into their hateful, stupid, juvenile Fox News programs with Megyn Kelly when she tells you things like, yeah, it's big brother to have mandatory vaccines, but sometimes you need big brother. 
Now look at the way that NPR covers this. Five things to know about the organizers of the Muhammad Cartoon Contest. Again, the first two are all about the Southern Poverty Law Center. They say it's anti-Islam, or is it a pro-free speech group? They say the Southern Poverty Law Center, which tracks extremist groups, lists this organization as, quote, an active anti-Muslim group. Let me tell you something. If you go to the Southern Poverty Law Center and you type in Islamic terrorists, you won't find any discussion of Islamic terrorists. What you will find is article after article of people who are worried about Islamic terrorists being labeled Islamophobes. The only time they talk about it is to attack people who are concerned about it. Then they go on to say that, talk about Pamela Geller in particular, say she's the executive director, and again, the SPLC, which is the authority for the government, and of course, NPR is a government mouthpiece, the SPLC describes her as the anti-Muslim movement's most visible and flamboyant figurehead. Then, the third one, and we'll stop at this. The group was recorded as it received word of the shooting. They say the crowd inside the center went quiet as the police officer began to leave, and someone shouted, was a suspect a Muslim? And they say, you can see the video here, but we're not embedding it because it does feature drawings of Muhammad. See, just like the Daily Mail, they won't even show you the cartoons. But of course, you can see cartoons mocking Jesus. And look at this article from NPR back in 1993 when they're doing an interview, a fawning interview with artist Andres Serranos. Now, this is the guy whose 1987 photograph, Piss Christ, showed the figure of Christ on a cross in a pool of urine. And they say he was denounced on the Senate floor by Senator Jesse Helms, who then began a crusade against the National Endowment for Arts. In other words, Christians didn't come out and say, we need to kill Andres Serrano. What they said was, we want you to stop holding a gun to our head and making us pay for this filth. That was the concern of people. They didn't even try to censor it in most cases. They just wanted to stop being forced to pay for this. When challenged about what this was about, Pamela Gella brought that very incident up about the Piss Christ artwork. Here's what she had to say. A pluralistic society, you have offensive speech. You have ideas. You have an exchange of ideas. You don't shut down a discussion because I'm offended. If something offends me, should I go out and slaughter people? Sure, when course. Jesus Christ was put in a jar of urine, it was called art. Mm -hmm. Did Christians like it? Of course not. Did they slaughter people? Did they burn embassies? Did they kill a, 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 a whole communities? Of course not. I this mean, cannot be sanctioned. Yeah, this uh, cannot be sanctioned. The West must stand up for freedom of speech. It's the core fundamental element of this constitutional republic. And once again, just like we saw after Charlie Hebdo, the pathetic, castrated media is actually censoring the images of this artwork, depictions, cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad in the very hours after this attack, sending the message that violence and intimidation works and that free speech, the First Amendment, the very values that underpin democratic, free society are less important than offending Muslims. And as Paul pointed out, they're censoring the cartoon images, but they are also embellishing the accounts. Look at this story. CNN exploits Garland shooting to attack the Second Amendment. Soon after the attack in Texas, CNN tweeted that the alleged perpetrators were armed with automatic weapons. And you can see the tweet embedded there in the story. And as Kurt Nemo points out, a search of news stories does not confirm that the police made the claim that they had automatic weapons. The CNN tweet points to an article on the CNN website, but that also does not mention automatic weapons. The phrase, however, does appear in a Reuters news report. And as he points out, it's not clear whether or not that uh, report from Reuters was a mistake on their part or whether they went with what the police told them. But here's another takeaway from that. Besides not attacking the Second Amendment, consider the fact that if they had rifles, whether these were semi-automatic or whether they were automatic uh, weapons, they were both taken out by one cop with a pistol who could shoot. Now, as an aside, I also want to point out that we just had some statues unveiled in Germany, in what used to be former East Germany, Stasi-controlled East Germany. You know what they put statues up to? They put statues up of Snowden, Assange, and Manning. And you can see these pictures of them standing on chairs. And as they point out, the artist behind the work, 
Italian sculptor, said that he wanted to, quote, represent three contemporary heroes who have lost their freedom for the truth. And they point out these statues will have fewer restrictions on their movements than the real people will, because they have already got a scheduled tour of these statues. That is what we are fighting for. We are fighting for an open society. We are fighting for free speech. In former Stasiland, in East Germany, in Alexanderplatz, which was the central focus of East Berlin, they understand these issues because they didn't have them for so long. But in America, where we have always enjoyed free speech and previously an open society, we don't understand fully yet what we have given away and we don't value it. We think that somehow American exceptionalism is going to protect us. We are not exceptional. We are just as vulnerable to dictatorship and the loss of First Amendment free speech rights as anybody is. Now, finally, let's take another look at one other aspect of this. And that is, of course, that as we remember in these statues, people who have blown the whistle on our secretive government, the government that uses every pretense to create a surveillance state, to hide everything from us in the name of national security. Evidently, they weren't able to stop these guys, even though they had them on their radar for a very long time. We see an FBI informant met with Garland shooting suspects quite some time before that. We're seeing now that contact goes back all the way to 2010. Here's Rob Dew with a report. You've probably heard of the shooting at the Prophet Muhammad cartoons exhibition in Garland, Texas over the weekend. But did you know Daily Mail used pictures from the event, but bowing to political correctness blacked out the offensive images. And thus far, President Barack Obama has been silent about the attacks. And CNN used the event to attack the Second Amendment when it was the Second Amendment that stopped the gunmen in their tracks. But now we've learned that the FBI has been watching one of the suspects using an FBI informant. Elton Simpson, the man identified as one of the two gunmen killed, was under surveillance by the FBI. FBI and subject of a terror investigation. The FBI has arranged numerous fake terror plots, including the Washington Metro bombing plot, the New York subway plot, the plan to blow up the Sears Tower in Chicago, the plot to bomb the Portland Christmas tree lighting, and others. In 2014, Human Rights Watch released a report stating nearly all high-profile domestic terrorism plots in the United States after 9-11 included the direct involvement of government agents and informants. You can read about all these stories at Infowars.com. Rob Dew reporting for PrisonPlanet.tv. Can the federal government take credit for saving us from a plot of its own creation? The FBI has foiled about 17 plots to kill Americans during the past 10 years. They all have a common and reprehensible thread. They were planned, plotted, controlled, and carried out by the federal government itself. In all of these 17 cases, from the Fort Dix 6 to the Lackawanna 7 to the Portland Parade Bomber, the feds found young men of Muslim backgrounds. Loners who were bitter in America, they befriended them, cajoled them, and persuaded them that they could change the world by killing Americans. But none of this keeps us safe. All of this makes us less free, as any one of us can be entrapped. And we are fools if we praise the government for exposing a plot of its own creation and saving us from a danger that never existed. <laughs> My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 
the knowledge of the ancients. Tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. This weekend, it became a political football for people to attack the governor of Texas. What they've done is they've created straw man arguments about what we have said about Jade Helm, about who Alex Jones is, and they're using that to try to beat up Governor Abbott. Take a look at this NPR story. Texas governor deploys state guard to stave off Obama takeover. That is never what anybody said. Of course, this is a very sarcastic piece. It kind of reads like the onion, uh, but of course it is NPR, so keep that under mind. Now, this is what they're saying. What's really going on? Well, President Obama is about to use special forces to put Texas under martial law. You see, there are these Walmarts in West Texas. I'm reading from this, directly quoting from this. That supposedly closed for six months for renovation. That's what they want you to believe. And then further down, he says, did I mention the ISIS terrorists? They're going to come across the border. They're going to hit soft targets all over the Southwest. They've set up camps just a few miles outside of El Paso. And by the way, he wrote that 22 hours before the shooting in Garland, Texas. Maybe he would like to take some of that back. But I guess I'm most concerned about the fact that there was a local reporter, local TV station, KVU. I spent a lot of time trying to educate her about what was going on because I felt like she was actually doing real journalism to the extent that she would call and ask us about what's going on. Now, of course, her management there, the editors, wanted a fear versus fact. They were not calling us for the fact side. They just wanted some fear and paranoia to put our name on. Of course, they did not quote us. They only quoted, and we'll talk about those sources that they quoted, but take a look at the headlines that they came up with. Conspiracy theorists are fired up over Jade Helm. And in this particular article, now this came from, I think, a, an affiliate, uh, KHOU. These are both ABC affiliates. Uh, talks about how this has ignited a firestorm of conspiracy theorist speculation as a prelude to the declaration of martial law. One widely repeated conspiracy, so forth and so on. And then the lieutenant colonel. They really want this to be a greater conspiracy. No, I think, Lieutenant Colonel, you want this to be a conspiracy theory. That's why you keep using the term over and over again, as the government has to anybody who is skeptical of the government's official story since the JFK assassination. They coined the term to try to shut down any skepticism, any investigation of an improb improbable explanation for what we had seen there. And then, of course, we've got this from the judge at the meeting in Bastrop. He says, this was not about changing anybody's mind, this meeting in Bastrop. So I guess we would ask, what exactly was that meeting about? Was it simply a propaganda meeting where they could just tell us what they wanted to? They didn't think they were going to change anybody's mind. And yet later on, he goes to say in these uh, stories that he thinks that uh, the majority of people now understand this and, and they really have changed people's minds. Listen, they ignored Jade Helm for over a month. For the most part, they ignored people's reaction, the public's reaction. And then when the governor paid attention to people's reactions, they came back full-blown attacking him as caving in to conspiracy theorists. Here's another one from KVU. Jade Helm 15 exercise sparks fear. See, they wanted to get that fear in there and backlash. They said the backlash has been fueled by conspiracy theories, mentioning everything from martial law to UN part plans to saying that Walmart was helping by shutting down multiple stores for various reasons. And of course, I think the key thing to take away from this is that even Walmart is not immune to conspiracy theories or to people questioning what they're saying when it is clearly a lie. I personally don't believe that that has anything to do with this exercise. Nevertheless, when they say they're shutting these stores down for six months for plumbing, everybody from plumbing contractors 
to the local government officials who say no plumbing permits have been withdrawn from these areas. Everybody is saying that clearly is not what's happening. So whether they're coming after the uh, union employees in those particular locations or what, we all just can speculate. But nobody believes the official story, and that's what's going on with Jade Helm as well. Then they go after, as they put it, Austin conspiracy theorist Alex Jones and his website. See, we don't have a media organization here. We just have a conspiracy theory website. Now, they even go on to point out one of the people at the Bastrop saying, well, I hope I'm not a conspiracy theorist. See, we can even adopt this language ourselves. We need to not be afraid of it. There's worse things than being a skeptic when the government or when corporations are telling you obvious lies. The worst thing is to engage in propaganda, especially as a journalist. And I'm very disappointed that after spending a lot of time and giving a detailed report, that they would ignore what we told them. They would ignore the facts. She came to me, she had not even bothered to look at the slides that were part of the initial report. Slides that they were taking from location to location, seeking written invitations, as they put it. Now they move on and they talk about how politicians are rising up to criticize Governor Abbott. Now, of course, these are politicians who are no longer in office, trying to claw their way back in by attacking the guy at the top. They say, while Abbott's move may have helped to quell the concerns of some who are concerned with the conspiracy theories, they just keep repeating that over and over again as if they think that's going to make it believable. It also drew a backlash from former members of the Texas House and a former lieutenant governor. Todd Smith, a former Republican member of the House, accused Abbott of pandering to idiots. Let's talk about who this Todd Smith is. This is somebody who was a state legislature, le legislator, and he lost back in 2012 65 to 35 in his own primary. Why? Because he championed not having any voter ID. And then they go on to Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst, who didn't make it very far in the run for governor this last time. Now, Dewhurst, they report in KVU, is a veteran of the Vietnam era. And they have some uh, clips from an editorial that he wrote for the Dallas Morning News. Well, you know what? Republican Lieutenant Governor, former Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst, was far more than just a Vietnam vet. He was somebody that spent a long time working for the CIA, and he never talks about that. Now, we had an article back in 2011. If you remember, there was a bill in Texas to stop the TSA from molesting children and adults as they are now allowed to do. That got a lot of support in the House. It passed unanimously in the House. And then Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst, former CIA operative, got involved. And then at that point, we saw the government threaten to turn Texas into a no-fly zone. At the time we reported this, we quoted Senator Patrick from Houston saying, Dewhurst came up with this elaborate political play to kill the bill without his fingerprints, but his fingerprints are all over this. Now at the time, Paul Joseph Watson pointed out that Dewhurst was also director of the Texas Task Force on Homeland Security, saying that during his tenure in the CIA in the early 1970s, Dewhurst helped the U.S. government violently overthrow democratically elected regimes in South America to plunder their oil and other resources, including the coup that helped neo-Nazi Bolivian General Banzer Suarez come to power. He was aided by a notorious Nazi, Klaus Barbie, the Butcher of Lyon, who escaped France after the end of World War II to enter Bolivia. And as Watson goes on to point out, Barbie, an expert in cruel and inhumane forms of torture for the purposes of interrogation, was a key CIA liaison through the years that Dewhurst served in South America. And when the Austin Chronicle asked Dewhurst whether he enjoyed a drink with the Butcher of Lyon at his U.S. Embassy bar, he responded, I never comment on intelligence matters. That's right. He doesn't talk about his CIA background very much. When he was in the Air Force, I say he was an air, airman, a Vietnam vet, but he was in Air Force intelligence for three years, and then he says he was in the CIA for four years and got out. Nevertheless, 20 years later, George H.W. Bush, a man many of, of us believe had far more extensive CIA uh, involvement than he has on his resume, said this when he recommended Dewhurst to Senator Dole for inclusion in a Blue Ribbon Intelligence Committee panel. He said, as you will see from the enclosed resume, Dewhurst knows the CIA from the inside. So that's somebody that KVU would go to get an objective opinion about Jade Helm. Somebody who is a political enemy of Governor Abbott, somebody who has deep, secretive, questionable ties 
with the CIA. Then we go on for another source that they quote at KVU, and this is senior military analyst Paul Floyd. Well, who is he a senior military analyst for? Well, that would be for Stratfor. Stratfor. Let's talk about Stratfor for a second, because you may have forgotten about that. Let's go back to February 2012, about three years ago. Here's a story from The Guardian. WikiLeaks Stratfor dump lifts the lid on intelligence industrial complex. They say 5 million internal emails from Stratfor, and this is, of course, a company that's based in Austin. They say the most striking revelation from the latest disclosure is not simply the military-industrial complex that conspires to spy on citizens, activists, and trouble causers, but the extremely low quality of the information available to the highest bidder. And then they go on to say what is even more disturbing is that the information revealed that H.B. Gary Federal and Stratfor suggest both companies were also seeking to profit by disrupting journalists and activist groups. H.B. Gary Federal documents suggest that they were marketing a campaign for Bank of America to attack Glenn Greenwald of Salon and for the U.S. Chamber of Commerce to attack the Washington, D.C.-based think tank, the Center for American Progress. Okay? Now, they also point out that they've been actively following and doing dirty tricks to union carbide activist groups like the Bhopal Medical Appeal because they had that massive spill in Bhopal. So if we back this up and we look at the objective analysis that we get from just one media outlet here, the ABC media outlet, they have as a source a former CIA uh, lieutenant governor who shut down the bill to get the TSA in line, threatening to turn Texas into a no-fly zone. But don't be concerned about any kind of martial law or any kind of over-the-top military training by special forces in Texas. Then they go to Stratfor, who has their own conspiracy theory reality. This is a conspiracy reality show, if you look at these emails. And then finally, they go to the man who is the spokesperson, the lieutenant colonel, who is the spokesperson for the exercise. Finally, I would say that Ted Cruz nailed it when he said, I understand why people fear a possible military takeover of Texas. He says, you know, I understand the concern that's been raised by a lot of citizens about Jade Helm. He says, it's a question I'm getting a lot. And I think part of the reason is we have seen for six years a federal government disrespecting the liberty of our citizens, and that produces fear, which is right back where we started. There you go, KVU. There's your quote for where the fear comes from. I would only disagree with Ted Cruz in saying this has only been going on through Obama. It's been going on much longer than six years. It is a bipartisan problem. Well, stay with us. We're going to be right back, and we're going to take a look at some immigration news that may surprise you. It's tied in with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We'll be right back. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosyl acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today and for a limited time, use the promo code WATER20 and get 20% off all ProPure products. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or give our crew a call at 888-253-3139. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the Internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? 
Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And listen to The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on your mind. Now, in something we've seen in America, we are seeing also in India, and that is local farmers rising up to stop open-air trials of GMO farming. This report on Infowars.com, thousands of farmers in India rise up against Monsanto. Some have said that India's prime minister arrived at the nation's pro-GMO position with the help of generous campaign funding from a GMO lobby, but that hasn't stopped thousands of Indian farmers from demonstrating against Monsanto and their biotech cronies in a massive grassroots movement that shuns anti-farmer practices and GMO farming. Now understand that what they're fighting against is the same type of thing that we've seen in the most recent referendum in Hawaii. We've had several farming communities that have put in prohibitions against open air farming. Now here's a statement from a group that represents the farmers. They say the government is exhibiting its pro-industry stance by pushing for unneeded, unwanted and unsafe GMOs in our farming. We want all open air field trials of GM crops stopped immediately in the country, since such open air trials pose not only a risk of contamination, but also the risk of trade rejection. In other words, they're not gonna be able to sell this in other countries. He says, furthermore, any moves towards trade liberalization in agriculture, whether through the WTO route, the World Trade Organization route, or through free trade agreements are unacceptable to us. Now, there's a lot in that statement, and we have seen the same sort of thing in America. Although we have seen little success in trying to get GMO labeling, the only exception being the state legislature in Vermont, all of the initiatives and referendums that have been brought up have been uh, shut down by propaganda from Monsanto and others. We have seen in farming communities, they have done the same sort of thing because they understand that this is a dangerous practice. It contaminates their crops in these open air trials. And the most recent example is in Hawaii. But what are they doing in Hawaii? Even though there was a referendum and they said, we don't want these open air trials because they are a trespass, they are now appealing it to the federal government. And we see that even in the GMO labeling, they are now appealing that to the federal government. But there's a higher authority that they're appealing to to shut everything down. And of course, that is these free trade agreements, so-called free trade agreements, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TTIP, the Transatlantic Partnership as well. That's what we really have to be concerned about. And now we see one after the other, senators and individuals on both the left and the right warning us about this path that we're going down. We had Elizabeth Warren stand up and say, if people knew what was in this secretive agreement, they would be appalled. And that's why the, the administration is not letting people know what's in it. She said, they say, if the people knew, they would reject you. She said, well, then the problem is with the trade agreement, it's not with the people knowing what's in it. Now we see on the right, we see on Sunday night, Senator Jeff Sessions sent out a critical alert warning about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Now, what is he warning us about? He says the TPA, and of course, that is the fast track authorization that was just passed, eliminates Congress's ability to amend or to debate this trade legislation. He says not only will Congress have given up the 67 vote threshold for a treaty, and the 60 volt threshold for important legislation, but will have given up even the opportunity for amendment. He said there is no real check either on the expiration of the fast track authority. If Congress does not affirmatively refuse to reauthorize it at the end of the defined period 2018, the president can automatically renew it for another three years. And then this one last thing that he had to say, which is very important, the USTR, the US Trade Representative, he says, outlined the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And when he put in to the key features summary, he said the TPP is a living agreement. Think about that, just like the Constitution being some kind of a living document that they can just reinterpret as they wish. That's what they're going to do with this agreement that they're negotiating in secret. Not only is it gonna be created in secret with just a straight up and down vote, no amendment, no debate, but they're also saying that it is a living agreement. This is what this means. He says, this means the president could update the agreement as appropriate to address trade issues that emerge in the future, as well as new issues that arise with the expansion of the agreement to include new countries. The living agreement provision 
means that participating nations could both add countries to the TPP without Congress's approval, like China, and could also change any of the terms of the agreement including controversial areas, such as the entry of foreign workers and foreign employers. Again, these changes would not be subject to congressional approval. So just like we see Congress abdicating its authority to all these alphabet agencies, these bureaucracies, which then write all the laws without any of Congress's uh, input, this trade authorization, which is really a massive surrender of sovereignty, and you can see it in what Senator Sessions just pointed out, we know that it's about sovereignty. We know that it's not about free trade. The trade areas that are in there are crony capitalism trade. This is no more free trade than we had free markets with the bank bailouts. But they're going to use this to do their own, write their own laws in the future. And of course, corporations are giving themselves parallel status with nations. And this affects copyright, this affects free speech issues, this affects the freedom of the internet. And as we've talked about, it's pervasive. But now we're starting to see that it is also a immigration issue. See, not only are we going to be exporting jobs, we're also going to be importing workers without any control and possibly importing dependents who will be coming in on the entitlement state. And if you think that this is something that is xenophobic, that is targeted towards people from Mexico or South America, just understand this. When you've got completely open borders, people can come in from any country. The Wall Street Journal points out immigrants to U.S. from China top those from Mexico. It isn't about where they come from. It's about the number of people that come in and that we have no control over that or over the entitlement state. As I point out, China was a country of origin for 147,000 recent U.S. immigrants in 2013. India had 129,000 immigrants, which also was more than we saw from Mexico. Now, how do they define an immigrant? Because this is important from the statistics standpoint. They said that was any foreign-born person in the U.S. who said they had previously lived abroad regardless of legal status. They say that uh, it might still uh, undercount some of the undocumented immigrants. Nevertheless, this isn't targeted towards any particular group. What we're saying is, there has to be some control over our borders. There has to be a, some control over where we're going to send jobs, how many workers we're going to bring in. It's going to be massive unemployment. And if you want a good example of what this looks like, look at this report from John Bowne about what happened at Disneyland. I want to thank all my fellow leaders uh, for their partnership and their commitment. Uh, to making the TPP a reality. If President Obama, the IMF, and legions of New World Order stalwarts have their way, your job, your children's future, and the future of the United States will be assimilated to the corporocratic Borg. Obama is diligently attempting to get the Trans-Pacific Partnership passed. The single greatest challenge for the United States right now, and my highest priority as president, is creating jobs and putting Americans back to work. And one of the best ways to do that is to increase our trade and exports with other nations. 95% of the world's consumers are beyond our borders. I want them to be buying goods with three words stamped on them, made in America. Corporations are heavily lobbying for the deal as legislative sycophants pawns of their corporate masters like John Boehner. Uh, making sure uh, that these kids have a shot at the American dream, like I did. <laughs> it's important. Rally support for a trade agreement that will make NAFTA look like child's play. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to announce my introduction of and request co-sponsors for a privileged resolution to withdraw the United States from the World Trade Organization. By what authority does the World Trade Organization assume jurisdiction over the United States federal tax policy? That's the question. At last reading, the Constitution required that all appropriations bill originate in the House and specify that only Congress has the power to lay and collect taxes. Taxation without representation was a predominant reason for America's fight for independence during the American Revolution. Yet now we face an unconstitutional delegation of taxing authority to an unelected body of international bureaucrats. Let me assure you, Mr. Speaker, this nation does not need yet another bureaucratic hurdle to tax reduction. It's very hard to make anything of the TPP because it's been kept very secret. Uh, half secret, I should say. It's not secret from the hundreds of 
corporate lawyers and lobbyists who are writing the legislation. To them, it's perfectly public. They're, in fact, writing it. It's being kept secret from the population. High-wage American workers and union members would face more direct competition from low-wage Malaysian, Vietnamese, and Mexican workers because the partnership would create a free trade zone with no tariffs or barriers. The treaty would give corporations a direct way to object to and even override individual countries' democratically passed laws. An international tribunal would have the power to overrule individual nations' legal standards and impose economic penalties. That power would be the cornerstone of an unelected corporocratic New World Order. I wish people could remember what the border looked like between Texas and Mexico before and after. I and mean, it was poor, really poor, on both sides of the border. If you go down there today, there's prosperity on both sides of the border, and that's in our nation's interests. We have the opportunity to remake the world. For this new era, our national security, we now know, will be determined as much by our ability to pull down foreign trade barriers is by our, our ability to breach distant ramparts. The devastation the U.S. economy and the Mexican economy suffered under NAFTA is shocking. Another corporatocracy program chipping away at the U.S. jobs economy is the abuse of the H-1B visa work program. For example, at the end of October 2014, IT employees at Disney parks and resorts were replaced by imported cheap labor they had to train as they were laid off. Disney CEO Bob Iger is one of eight co-chairs of the Partnership for a New American Economy, a leading group advocating for an increase in the H-1B visa cap. One of the briefing documents made this claim, H-1B workers complement instead of displace U.S. workers. It explains that as employers use foreign workers to fill more technical and low-level jobs, firms are able to expand and allow U.S. workers to assume managerial and leadership positions. But the workers interviewed said they knew of few co-workers who had landed one of the new jobs. Several of the workers in interviews said they didn't want to appear as xenophobic, but couldn't help but to observe, as one did, that there were times when I didn't hear English spoken in the hallways. As the layoff date neared, I really felt like a foreigner in that building, the worker said. John Bound, Infowars.com. Well, that's it for tonight's news. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Now, if you want to see it as the news happens each Monday through Friday at 7 Central and support our operation here, please become a paid subscriber at Prison Planet TV. That'll allow you to share it with up to 20 other people. All of you can have access to Alex Jones's documentaries. And again, you can watch it as it happens each Monday through Friday. Join us again tomorrow night at 7 Central. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. When it comes to you and your family's health, InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.